for joining this presentation and I will try to share a concept about uh, what I call this uh, web of twins. So it's more an experimentation than an uh, established project. So first, who am I? So I'm a software engineer and I have been a long time a software, uh, free open source uh, software user and I st started to contribute like 20 years ago now. And I was, um, I had the opportunity to join uh, some industry and open source project like Tizen. I was doing um, some contribution for Intel at the time and then I moved to Samsung to work more on IoT. And uh, currently I'm uh, open for any kind of cooperation or sponsorship or I have to think about what can I am to do in the future. But anyway, first uh, let me just um, introduce the concept of uh, what is a digital twin. So in the year 2000, uh, when I was a student, I hacked something which was very close to this uh, uh, concept, but I didn't know it. So I made uh, some kind of uh, a puppet you, are, you have in 3D in a VRML in the browser, and I was working with people, puppeters who have some kind of sensor, and we are trying to animate the, the puppet over the web. So it was a... Um, a nice uh, demonstration. There was no real market for this, but uh, it was possible at that time. But it was not using any open source uh, thing. So now the things have changed, and I will explain why. So the concept itself is, has been uh, well uh, promoted by the researcher from Florida Institute of Technology, and he described as a digital replica of a physical entity. And uh, the, specification, the specific stuff is that the balls are somehow connected. So if you move the 3D model, for instance, it will have uh, an effect of the real world uh, object and the same in the opposite way. So from this, you can have some kind of uh, um, new service to, to design application. So you can do some simulation, of course. You can uh, use this at the design stage of the product of uh, the device you are con trying to consider and you can try to think about what kind of API this thing can be, can share to the others and trying to uh, establish new services even if you don't have the product. So it's uh, part of the product life management and uh, it's quite interesting because it, it can, um, when sometimes you have some delay due to production or sourcing, you can work on, let's say, the poor version of the device of the thing you want to work with. And uh, it's quite popular now in the industry when people want to do some simulation of a production line and so on. Instead of building the whole thing, you can try to get some simulation and see how it behaves. And if you are configuring or alterating a bit, you can get some early feedback uh, without any cost. And, and then cities also is a, in the domain that can be useful, yeah. So before going on, I want to emphasize some ethical consideration because uh, s s large scale uh, deployment of uh, digital twins can be problematic. Yeah. We, we have um, now a lot of many issues with social media, private information, private communication and so on. So if we do, if we start, try to do to duplicate the world in the digital world, maybe we we'll try to have some ethical con consideration from the beginning. So, so don't wait for problem to find solution. Maybe you just need to design your system and trying to avoid problems. So one thing interesting uh, recently is that uh, European regulation has a recommendation, a strong recommendation for system designer to handle privacy by design and by default. So I believe that uh, it's an opportunity not to miss from open source uh, communities because privacy is part of our DNA. We are uh, somehow users, so we know that uh, everything should remain private uh, the, when it's possible. So we, I think it's, it's something where we can uh, give us answers to this kind of future problem. So now let's talk about uh, the web, it, it's uh, designed for interoperability, that's for sure. And it, uh, it was, it's a huge uh, achievement because today we are still able to browse this websites that have been designed maybe 20 or 25 years ago. And it's transversal, you can connect everything to the web. So that's um, the base to do something. It has now really good 3D support. It was not the case when I made this uh, puppet. We had, you need to add some kind of plugins and so on, it was a bit 
boilerplate. Now you have a WebGL inside the browser. This means you have a, a good performance because it's working directly on the GPU. So making games in a browser is totally feasible. And uh, yeah, privacy is one of the uh, feature of the browser. So you have some kind of process in isolation in the browser. So that's something interesting for the previous slide. And uh, next, people in the uh, IoT and specifically the W3C, we are specifying, specifying the protocol and so on. They s propose some uh, um, has some recommendation to design IoT system without reinventing the wheel, but by adjusting existing standards. So we have like HTTP, uh, JSON, JSON LD, and uh, WebSocket, and this kind of uh, technology is still applied to IoT. And um, Mozilla made an implementation of this uh, Web of Things concept, and uh, the selling point of this uh, project is making a, a home platform a smart home platform to give users the control of their device. So they are handling privacy from the beginning of the project. So device and uh, gateway are working together into user uh, uh, network. So there is no leak cage possible, no um, data logging and so on. So the, the, the software itself is providing some UI to control all the things, to connect them together, to establish some behavior. And uh, also you have ex extra features that you can re connect to your home gateway remotely, share some resource one per one. If you select to share, let's say, a, a door to some members of your family, you can do this. And it has been designed to be flexible and to be support new plugins and new features. So that's the platform I've been uh, working on. So the web things now are dumb devices are connecting to the gateway, but they are using a basic HTTP uh, con uh, protocol. So it's based on REST. And uh, they are describing all the resource using a Mozilla schema. It's uh, um, a simplified version of what the W3C is doing, but basically it's the same. It's a set of properties to describe the thing. Is that a on button? I can turn in on and off some level if I want to adjust the volume of the lamp of whatever, and some action if you want to give instruction to your device like, okay, fade uh, the the brightness of your lamp slowly and then turn it off, for instance, and also receive some events from device. So. But uh, if you want to implement simple things, you can just focus on properties. So security is handled by the gateway. So this means uh, if you want to share the outside, the, this gateway uh, is um, ex giving some REST API with uh, tokens. So you don't have direct access to the device. You need uh, to get uh, authenticated somehow. And um, yeah, that's it. So, for instance, I made a, a, a very minimalist example. I call it a smart home example, but actually it has only one thing inside. This is just a, a solar panel on the top, so it's uh, just a, a simulator. So you can try it, it's uh, open source. And uh, what you see um, on this uh, description, you have some ID to identify and the properties, as I just mentioned, and a link for each properties, and then you can put some, you can get the value or put the value using uh, uh, get or post request. It works it's straightforward. So now if we want to to address the problem of uh, visualizing the things, so I just mentioned about the WebGL for, G, for the accelerated graphics. And now lately we have a new specification called WebXR, which which is an evolution of uh, web VR we used to have a couple of um, years ago. I think it was what it was showing just before. And uh, now it's more unified and uh, it's supporting the augmented reality use case. And uh, to do um, some application, you can use the iframe framework, which is very, very simple. So 3D is not something, it used to be something really complicated, but now you can do this as easy as writing an HTML page in JavaScript. So this is a, here is a basic one. You just import the library and describe uh, 
a structure of different elements and you can bind with this. So here is a, a sphere on a, on a, um, inside it. So. so then something interesting is the GTLF format. So it's a format made for delivering 3D content to the web. It has been proposed by the Kronos group who was in charge of OpenGL and uh, other 3D, uh, 3D formats. And, uh, it's uh, basically it's uh, just a structure in JSON describing the same graph of each, each element of the of the content, and it's already supported in a Blender 3D. So that's really interesting because if you have to work with designer, probably they will not uh, describe all their world by writing uh, HTML5 uh, HTML A frame tags. They will use a tool. So here is an example with the this uh, GTLF um, output. So what you see in the background, maybe it's, it's a bit dark, but uh, there is a blinking uh, piece on the, on the roof on the right, which is simulating the value of the my solar panel. So if there is a, s a lot of sun, you get a higher value, and you can simulate this. And uh, what I'm showing in this example is that you have a direct bindings between the description from the web thing, so the physical thing, the 3D, the, the actual device, and the same uh, description is aligned to the GTLF uh, format. So if I'm here, what I'm doing in this, uh, I'm just updating the, the value. So if the value move physically, like from a sensor, it will uh, access to the DOM tree of the web, of the web page and change some attributes. Um, now, if you want to do something more physical, so something real, uh, I made a, a DIY uh, smart home of this size, so it's uh, like a toy, and I, re I made a, my solar panel with, a, with a, the, you know, the garden lamp you can find uh, for super cheap in the outside. You can ju just plug this directly to a, a microcontroller or board, and you get some basics uh, of uh, what uh, a smart home with a solar panel will work. And it's running a JavaScript on the microcontroller. So you can uh, then uh, expose all the resources uh, using the WebSync API for IoTGS, which is a, a tiny JavaScript runtime made uh, uh, for low-end uh, um, microcontroller. And also I made a, also a module for dealing with sensors. So here is demonstration, but I, I can try to make a live demo. So, um, it's okay. so I'm just reloading. Hmm. Connectivity is not that fast. I'm not sure it will work, but okay. So what you see on the corner here is a, a camera I have on top of my desk, and there is a small robot here. <coughs> um, so I can control uh, different uh, units. So here is a light, for instance. So I can change the value. And the robot here is described from, uh, so it's a, just a set of motor and you can uh, adjust different angles. So let me show you it running in the right time. So, so what you see in, um, and the top is the actual thing, and below is a virtual one made with A-frame. It's not a one-to-one -one model. It's, it's not the same because I made it uh, by my own. And uh, I found that um, it can be a bit challenging to have exactly the same system because if there is some mechanical instruction, oh, here I'm showing some the rule system when you can ch change the uh, attribute of the physical things depending on some context. And so, so there is the same rule in the opposite direction. So when I'm pressing on the on button, it will uh, move forward. And uh, if I'm turning it off, it will go backward. So as you can see, it's updated in the same time. It's not that there is no smooth animation. Oh, yeah, I put a sensor in a, on the head of my, uh, of my robot, and I'm measuring uh, the color of what I see uh, in front of me. So if I change the color of the light, yeah, it's updated in a, in a sensor. So this is uh, one uh, use case. Also, I made a 3D version of uh, my dashboard. 
So this is not the actual thing, this is just uh, abstract widget in 3D and uh, it below it can interact exactly the same. So you can be in uh, some kind of immersive world and interact with it and it has the same effect in reality. So maybe it can be useless for many, um, many cases, but uh, if you are considering you are you have a, a robot somewhere on some planet in, a, in space and you want to control it, it's more maybe from an in environment which is immersive, it's better. But more realistically, when you have very small mechanical parts that fit in a very, very restricted uh, uh, space, having, having the ability to scale it to larger level and to see and look around how does it behave can be also something interesting. Yeah. I think I have another demonstration here. here. Oh yeah, this one is about uh, using sensor. Oh, but maybe I handle more questions later. So yeah, so what I have uh, on the screen is a uh, it's uh, a three D scene which is just a light bulb and it's uh, updating accordingly to what the sensor is uh, showing. So it works in a browser, and browsers now are working in a VR headset. So you can, you have no, you don't need to create a specific application. You can uh, have something. Uh, so sorry for the quality of this video, but what I wanted to show is that uh, I can make also standalone application here. I made a link, and if you look at what I'm clicking, this is address of my web thing. So I can get direct access to the to the sensor and uh, then uh, it will update it in my uh, 3D uh, view. So it's not, it's VR now. I think, yeah, we made a version with uh, AR at the same time. So yeah, the application is portable. You don't need to deploy it to a store. You don't need to, to, to uh, under a specific SDK. That's the promise of the web. Well, but that's the theory because in practice, most of uh, VR vendors, I'm using extension and so on. So yeah, here I'm controlling uh, some LED and all the widgets I'm having action on are updated in a, in a VR world also. So what am I doing here is, okay, turning on uh, uh, a fan. Yeah, it's off. And I think, yeah, I have also um, a smart outlet um, here is a switch, so I can. So it's the same switch we have in the dashboard can be also interpreted for the 3D world and it's having an effect in the same time. So yeah. So the beauty of uh, this demonstration is that I use the Mozilla schem um, schemas and it's generic enough to describe all kinds of things. You don't need to have to do something specific. If you have to deal with Boolean numbers and so on, it will work for a wide range of devices. So yeah, the same in 3D here. So yeah, if there is any question, I will be happy to give any hints. Uh, So I'm sure there'll be questions because not everything was self-evident, uh, especially when you discover all the possibilities. So we'll start with the first question rather. By the way, you forgot your laptop. Yeah, it's, okay, you get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, this is another demonstration I can show. It's only a, a, a minute. So yeah, I made uh, this robot, and uh, so first I made uh, a web thing of just a motor, a servo motor, where I can adjust the angles, and it, I was updating a, a AR frame. So as soon as I had this uh, working, it was straightforward to to animate a, tree, a real robot with uh, four motors. It works for one, it works for four. So here is a 3D version of it, where you can look around it, as I said previously. So anyway, it's a proof of concept so far. Uh, I made it uh, I'm very modular, so if you want to build things, you can just pick some specific component and you can build something else. And it all is open source, so I need to share with you the, the links. Um, OK. 
Okay, I'll. Uh, I was just wondering uh, um, which part was the the most challenging one, the most challenging part of the project. Uh, uh, okay, thanks. So you said what was the most challenging part of yeah, this? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, I would say that uh, uh, to identify the right person to to introduce me to this kind of technology. <laughs> so this uh, story started actually one year ago in this room when uh, we met uh, together. And uh, we had some kind of uh, different approach of something common. And uh, we met again in uh, my home city, Rennes in France. And we started uh, to act together something. In, in, and in less than a day, we we, we, we established uh, the both way direction from sensor to really to to 3D and back and forth. So that's we got pretty fast results, that's for sure. And to answer the question, um, no major difficulties. But when you are dealing with IoT device, it's not very reliable. For instance, so this robot is made for it's like a toy. Actually, you can buy it for couple of euros and it's sometimes it gets stuck and so on but uh, for property thing it's not a problem it's not something you're running in production so if you want to build something real like physical device yeah re reliability of the device is a uh, it's the it's full full-time job yeah here it's a research and development project yeah. um, do you have any plans to use um, other robots that are low-cost robots but uh, a little yeah. bit, you know, better than. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. So the question is, uh, if I have any plans to use a different range of robots, uh, I'm not specifically a geek of robots. Uh, I, I wanted to make at least once, but I, I figured it out that uh, the robotic community now in open source is quite interesting. Now they are making a lot of open hardware device you can get, but. Uh, yeah, does it worth uh, the investment for me? Not specifically, but if there is a SUS project, if they're looking uh, a, so a software stack to use, that's probably, uh, yeah, I would be more than happy for them to use this. Yeah. But again, if you go into robotics, probably JavaScript is not the best option here yeah. <laughs> because uh, you have a lo lot of uh, hard real time constraints. So I'm not sure it's part of the standard yet. So. The most important platform, for instance, is ROVS, the robotic operating system. But for here, it's not very, it's not uh, critical because it's uh, just an arm. It's not going to 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 break anything. But if you are making like a, a RC car or something like this, yeah, if you break too late, uh, you can destroy it. <laughs> okay. Uh, can you cr clarify? Uh, the purpose of uh, each tools you, uh, you use. Like, uh, I don't understand what uh, the Samsung tool does and what the Mozilla tool does too. Okay, so let's start from the lower level. So first, we need a hardware platform. Oh, okay, the question is, um, what is, uh, w where are the, t the tools are interacting each between each other and uh, uh, well, what is specific to Mozilla and other components? So, once you have this uh, hardware uh, setup, you need uh, to implement the re this uh, Mozilla REST API. So it's a, uh, it's not a software; it's mostly a protocol. So you can do in any tools you want. Uh, for me, I made a, I ported a Node.js uh, library to IoT.js, which is a, a JavaScript runtime from Samsung. So yeah. In I'm in this case, I am in both world. And uh, then once you have this uh, REST API from the thing, yeah, you need to connect to the gateway for sure. And then if you want to get access to the thing directly, if you want to do it properly, you need to share the resource through the gateway to another device that will understand the, the REST API. So this API can be implemented in any, any different uh, languages. So I made my JavaScript code, it's just a client. And then from the rendering, I reuse another project which was uh, initiated by Mozilla, but still not. It's, no, it's now living by its own, which is a ZA frame framework. And this framework is based on the standard I mentioned about uh, WebXR, which is standardized by another group. 
So the full chain is a different pieces of open source. Each is uh, smoothly working together because they are aligned to a fixed specification. So doing some quark quick and dirty acts is something interesting, but uh, to uh, achieve some uh, cooperation and y you are, if you don't want to lose time to do some bridge from one technology to another, it's better to, st to use the same all the long, all, all the chain. Nobody is speaking after, so I can stay here the one one year. <laughs> no. No, that's our school. What are what are the um, what's the ideal contribution you would get on those repositories? Uh, something unexpected. <laughs> Good because we have a creative crowd. So. No, something I, I think that could be interesting is to um, to geolocalize uh, different objects and uh, having them working together. So maybe either at a human level or maybe something bigger like uh, a city, let's say, visualizing uh, vi 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 traffic jams and so on in real time. That's something uh, that can be, can be nice to see. But yeah, no, I have not, no specific ideas. Um, I just wanted to uh, to validate that this can be done, so then it can apply to the many use cases. Yeah, uh, if you have some some hints about uh, how do you um, create a, a web framework that interacts with in real time with a lot of different uh, sources, that can be interesting because if you here it's easy because I have uh, only uh, one device and maybe a, a couple of a dozen, but if I want to scale to maybe a thousand. Maybe it's not uh, the best uh, way to do it, so I have to maybe use a different protocol. Yeah, I know that there is some streamer, streamable um, uh, like time series and so on. So maybe it's something I should look look at. 